Food waste, as we all know, is a globally increasing problem. Food waste uh, generates 3.3 billion tons of greenhouse gases annually, and that makes food wastage the third top emitter after USA and China. Therefore, addressing food waste is an important problem uh, for social, economic and environmental perspectives. We often and easily think that food industry is the main uh, contributor to food waste, and a lot of that could not be uh, inhibited. However, about a third of all the food that has been produced for human consumption is actually not consumed and not eaten. So there is a, a question to address. Household waste is also there one where we often think that, well, it's all these inedible materials like peels and bones and such. But in fact, the amount of food waste produced in households is even higher than in the, in the food industry. And therefore, food waste created by households is the single most important factor of producer of food waste along the supply chain. One of the problems is that at least over the past half a century or so, the average household size has been decreasing. And to cope with the food waste is even more difficult in small, uh, small households where you have less people to consume the food that ha has been purchased and produced. Another effect of our modern and urban lifestyle is that there are less farms and one of the obvious ways how to get rid of food waste is no longer there. We cannot feed the food waste to domestic animals. And also there are limitations that, for example, food waste from restaurants cannot be fed to animals from safety reasons. This whole thought of how difficult it is to avoid food waste struck me really when I was talking to Millers and they told me that the actual shelf life of a whole wheat uh, flour is as low as three months which is really short. And uh, the product may still be edible, it's not toxic at that time. However, the baking quality is, is worse and the, the sensory quality is bad. At the same time, we experience this juxtaposition that we want to eat fresh food. But we are also being offered larger packages, multi-packages, value packs and such. And we buy more food. We're persuaded to buy more food, which we don't have time to consume. And therefore, we need to find ways to increase the shelf lives. So I believe that even the smallest changes can have a transformative impact. I believe that in this case also, small streams make large rivers. And if we extend the shelf life, we need to produce less food. And therefore, we can release the water, energy and land resources to other, uh, other things. We know that the key elements of reducing waste are uh, reuse, reduce and recycle. While reusing food might not really be a viable option, reducing and recycling raw materials definitely is. One example for re recycling materials and re um, valorizing the value of that is the use of grape pumice from fruit, uh, wine pressing. And from there, uh, the industry is already successfully extracting polyphenols that can be used as antioxidants in other foods to extend the shelf life of the products. We at ETH Zurich, we've identified also several other vegetables and, and fruits where you can f uh, utilize these uneaten materials and uh, get valuable components, valuable chemicals out of them that can be extracted or fractions that can be further used in foods to extend the shelf life. And it, it, it would be most important to, together with the industry to find uh, ways to utilize these materials to valorize all the potential that is in this food waste. Another aspect of our research also at ETH Zurich is the use of soluble dietary fibers, for example, to be added into bread and therefore delay the, the staling process of the bread. We've also done major screenings of different varieties or the variability within different natural varieties of cereal grains to see which ones of those might turn rancid slower than the others. The scientific pr process behind all of this is to gather a really complex multidimensional data set of the contents of these compounds, how they're affected by different genotypic and environmental conditions, different biological processes and all the combinations thereof. And then to use this to, uh, to extend the shelf lives. So if we could extend the shelf life of a product with a week or even just a couple of days, we can already make a difference. If you buy your bread today and it will still be fresh tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, you don't have to sort of toss away half of the bread that you don't really feel like eating because it's not fresh anymore. This approach can only be uh, successful if it's done on all levels. So we still need to educate our uh, individual consumers in how to change their consumption behaviors to reduce food waste. But it also has to go deeper down into the institutional level so that it's implemented, all these small changes are implemented and then they get a multiplication uh, aspect. 
So we as scientists, we can take the lead in identifying all these changes that are needed, all the potential new innovative uh, compounds, products, etc. But it will only be successful if it's incorporated into action with the concerted action of the food industry, the policymakers, and us food scientists. Thank you.